If the only prayer you ever say is thank you, it will be enough. And certainly that is the prayer that is in the heart of all of us who mark Jubilee today. In behalf of all my brothers, I thank each of you, our families, our friends, for joining us in thanksgiving to our loving God, for the gift of our vocation, and for the many gifts given to us in our life and ministry as priests and brothers of Holy Cross. Your love shown in so many ways and your prayers have been crucial supports for us in our efforts to follow Jesus. And in a special way, allow me to thank our Holy Cross brothers and sisters, those who are with us in this church today. Thank you. Thank you. Those who may be watching from afar in some way, and especially those of our infirm and elderly who are in the Holy Cross House, the Charrier House, St. Mary's. Thank you, all of you. And also the many now deceased who inspired us, supported us in our journey to this day. Thank you. We are so grateful that God's call has led us to this Holy Cross family. The years pass so quickly. Some of the days have been pretty long, but the years have passed quickly. The paths we have walked during these years as Holy Cross brothers and priests have been many and diverse, leading us to varied types of service in different countries, different cultures. Our constitutions told us that the farther we would go in giving, the more we would stand to receive. And we are humbled and grateful today to reflect on all we have received during these years from the lives, the struggles, the stubborn faith of the people God has given us to serve. Dear people of God, wherever you are around this globe, we give you thanks and we ask God's blessing upon you. <laughs> Father Dick Stout, was a friend, a dear friend, and mentor for many in Holy Cross. And after years of service as a nurse and then as a counselor of students here in the States, he came to East Africa. And his final assignment there for 13 years was as an assistant in our novitiate in Uganda. Health issues in his mid-80s required his return to the States. He died just a few years ago. Ask any of the novices who were formed in religious life by Dick what they remember most from what he taught them. And you are likely to hear his most often repeated mantra. The main thing is to make the main thing the main thing. <laughs> Our scripture readings today are all about the main thing. The main thing for all of us as followers of Jesus. And the main thing, of course, is love. There is nothing more important than love as we live our life in this world. And without love, nothing we do is really very important. 
The revelation given to Moses through the bush that though on fire was not consumed is a revelation of God's eternal, all-embracing love. And it is out of the midst of that fire of love that God calls Moses to care for his people. God's love for each of us is the foundation of the call we all share in many different ways to give ourselves in love to others. The Apostle John tells us that love is first of all of God. God is love. This is love, he says, not that we have loved God, he knew that he was weak, but love is what, the way God is towards us. We know that it is baptism Jesus heard the voice of his Father tell him, You are my beloved Son. And I think it was this experience of the Father's love and Jesus' absolute trust in that love that enabled the life of compassion, the life of self-sacrifice that followed all the way to Calvary. All of us our beloved sons and daughters of God. In the words of Henry now, we are the beloved. That is the truth of our lives. Once we take in that incredibly good news and trust it in our lives, we then know we are sent, like Peter was sent, to feed the lambs, tend the sheep, care for God's people. The love we receive from God is the love we want to offer to others. We breathe it in, in attentiveness and in prayer. We breathe it out in service. It is all one love. In our Gospel today, Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And we recognize immediately that this triple question is to reverse Peter's triple denial before that cock crow pierced his fearful heart. Jesus, in his mercy, is calling Peter a second time. Like Peter, we know our weaknesses. There's no way around our fallenness. And as we look back on the years that have led to this day, there's not only great rejoicing in all that God has been able to do through and for and in us, great rejoicing, but there is also some real sadness and regret for, this, for our self-centered sinfulness, our fears, our doubts that have led to failures in our call to be instrument of God's compassion and love to those around us. We are aware that God has asked, had to ask us, do you love me? more than the three times that Peter required. And we are so grateful today for the mercy God has never failed to show us, calling us to Him again and again. Jesus identified Himself with His people. And so, when we say to Him, Yes, Lord, I love You, we are also saying, Yes, Lord, I love your people. All of them, of every tribe, every culture, every nation. Yes, Lord, I love your people. As the poet says, Christ plays in 10,000 places. And we want
want to add in even more faces, in your faces, in our faces. Take off your shoes, God said to Moses, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Holy ground is everywhere. Holy ground is everyone. Because God awaits us in the beauty and the mystery of all creation. And in the beauty, however flawed, and the mystery of each person. Those closest to us in our homes, in our communities, and those at a distance, most especially, as Mother Teresa insisted, in the distressing disguise of the poor and suffering of our world. Rabindranath Tagore, a Bengali poet, musician, mystic, tells the story of our call in this way. I slept and dreamt that life is all joy. I awoke and found that life is but service. I served and found that service is joy. When we have served others with the image of Jesus, with hearts full of love, we have known that joy. When we have not held back from the sacrifices involved in giving ourselves to others, we have known that joy. It is the joy of participating in the mission of Jesus to bring Easter life and hope to his people. We all have that call. We are all invited to that joy. Lord, lead us into love. This is actually the title of a small book of gospel reflections offered by Father Frank Quindiv and one of our Holy Cross brothers in Bangladesh. Lord, lead us into joy, into love. Each reflection in his book proclaims what today's scriptures make clear. All Jesus did and does for us has one purpose, to lead us into love. Love for the others he gives us here on earth and the all-embracing, unending love that is our promised future in God. Scripture describes that future as a great banquet around God's table of joy. We are invited to that banquet now at this Eucharistic table and in all that follows on this Jubilee Day. And the only prayer we need to say is thank you.